Greetings everybody. I wanted to share my thoughts on some of the stuff that's going around the internet now. Um, two, two things in particular. One is there's uh, there's been a couple GR Corollas which have caught fire and there's also claims that Toyota will void your warranty if you go over 85 miles an hour and I wanted to just give my thoughts on that. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with me and that's fine. Um, if you expect me to side with the owners of these cars, I'm not going to do it and here's why. Um, first of all, there's plenty of people out there who have these cars uh, with, you know, now coming up on 40 or 50,000 miles, um, trouble-free, completely trouble-free. Um, this drivetrain or a version of it was used in the GR Yaris. Um, and there's people with over 100,000 miles on those, again, trouble-free. Um, here's what I'm thinking is happening on these cars burning down. The, uh, the people are claiming, oh, I never modded my car, or I never did this, or I never did that. And I, what I'm here to say is, there is no way that something wasn't done by somebody under the hood that uh, that caused that situation. Whether they were monkeying with the tuning and messed things up, or I mean, even something so, something like having the dealer do an oil change and uh, spilling oil everywhere that caught on fire. I mean, there's no way one of these cars properly maintained, properly handled, and whatever, even if it was driven over 85 miles an hour, um, would do something like that. Um, somebody did something, and whenever there's stories like this out there, there's always something left out um, that the person who owns the car doesn't want you to know. Now, that being said, I do feel really bad for the people who have had to deal with this, and I hope they were made whole by their insurance company or, or whatever. I mean, no matter what happened, um, it does really suck, and I do feel for the people, so don't get me wrong there. I'm just saying somebody did something to these cars to cause that to happen. They're not coming out of the factory like that. Now, if you have definitive proof otherwise, you know, pay, post a comment down there. Let me know. Um, I, I just think there's not enough uh, transparency in these in these stories out there. Um, you know, that's again, that's just my thought. I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but this is a very well built car. Um, the GR Corolla is built in the same factory that they used to build the LFA, and it's built to a very high standard, very high precision. And um, yeah, I just, I just can't buy it that they're coming out of the factory like that. That the, you know, no, nobody did anything, and all of a sudden, somebody's just driving along one day, and their car catches on fire. You know, now that kind of thing does happen to Ferraris. <laughs> I will say that, but um, yeah, all, and especially EVs. Yeah, now the EVs are the really bad ones for catching on fire. Holy cow, it's hard to tell how fast you're going in this car. You need to slow down the speed limit here. The other thing is about the Toyota voiding the warranty when you go 85 miles an hour. Well, first of all, they, even they displayed it on the screen, uh, something in, I think it's in the owner's manual or whatever, saying that, you know, warning you have to use the right tires to go over 85 miles an hour. 
somehow somebody twisted that around to translate to, oh, we'll void your warranty if you go over 85 miles an hour. Well, that's another thing that's absolutely not true. Um, again, people are either embellishing or leaving things out of the story when they, when they talk about these things. Um, you know, for, for a warranty to be, uh, denied for just simply going over 85 miles an hour, that would be a field day for, for lawyers. They would be all over that and Toyota would lose. There is no way Toyota is going to get away with saying, Yep, we saw you went over 85 miles an hour. Your warranty's void. Sorry, have a nice day. No, that's not happening either. Again, if you can show me verifiable proof, let's do a little pull here. So there's a lot of embellishment, misinformation, and people just simply leaving things out for, for convenience sake um, to, to, to suit their cause. Now, I, I, you know, again, I, I still will say I feel really bad for the people who have had to deal with things like this. It's not fun. It sucks. Um, I've had cars that have uh, that I've had to fight dealers over warranty repairs for various reasons but there, there was always a lot more gray area and it was always a lot more uh, there's always a lot more to the story um, now I will say this uh, one of one of a dealer's favorite things to say, when you go in for warranty repairs is we can't duplicate your concern or we can't hear that noise that's really obvious. Now that's where you can run into some really frustrating stuff. Um, so yeah, I have been there. I do know what it's like for a dealer to fight you on warranty repairs. Um, and that, that does absolutely suck. I will I will say that, you know, again, I feel for these people who are having to deal with this, but I, I think what's, what's happening is, is people are starting to come to the conclusion that, you know, again, if you're just innocently driving your car on the highway, it's going to catch on fire if you've never done anything wrong to it or never modified it or, or never spilled oil all over the engine or whatever. Uh, it won't. I mean, again, show me verifiable proof, um, you know, then I might reconsider, but I'm just, I'm very skeptical. You know, I, I don't, I don't take things at face value without a lot more proof. And, you know, I, I'm saying this as an owner of one of these cars, I'm not in fear that my GR Corolla is going to catch on fire for no reason. It's just not going to happen. You know, I'll post a video 10 or 20 years from now. Um, and, you know, whenever I have however many miles on this, I don't drive this car very much. Uh, but I do drive it. And be like, surprise, it never caught on fire. And I actually don't expect to ever have to use the warranty on this car either. Um. You know, I just just driving one of these, you can tell how well it's built. I mean, it is built like a 90s Japanese car. Uh, everything just is very well put together. It's made in Japan and you know, just a fantastic car overall. You know, call me a fanboy if you want, but I've had a lot of different cars. And I have had plenty of cars that I've had bad things to say about. And this is not one of them. 
So, anyway, those are my thoughts just based on the stuff that I've seen floating around the internet. You know, if, if you're thinking about buying one of these and you're afraid it's going to catch on fire or that you're not allowed to go eight, over 85 miles an hour, don't worry about that. It, it's just, there's always more to the story. That's, that's all I'm here to say is, you know, if somebody tells you a story about something, especially if they stand to be hurt by revealing the full truth, that's where it really kicks in. You know, if, if somebody says, oh, I never modded the car, but they know damn well that the mod caused the problem, then, well, they're not going to say that publicly. You know, they might not even say that privately. They may keep that to themselves. So, anyway, I'm actually looking forward, too, to the, uh, the 2025. I would love to see what this is like with an automatic and some more power. I think it's a good thing because it gives buyers a choice and it opens it up to a whole new market of people who uh, don't want to or can't drive a stick, but they want to have a, a cool car like this. Uh, the automatic opens that up to a whole new world of people. But I, you know. I will say, and I've done it so in other videos, I just think this is one spectacular car. Um, there's nothing quite like it. I mean, the closest is the WRX, but for various reasons, it's just not the same thing. Um, this car has a brilliant all-wheel drive system, fantastic shifter feel fantastic clutch feel great steering even though it's electric steering and I'm not a big fan of the electric steering um, and it just feels the way it should I mean these these GR Corollas if you haven't driven one go check one out if you're thinking about getting a sporty car the only thing that I noticed when I first got it was that these the, the ride is, is tuned for more sporty driving, so it's it's not smooth. I'm on a rough road now. You may see the camera bouncing all over the place. But you do get used to it. Um, and, you know, an, another little nitpick is the seats are not the most comfortable in the world. Um, but they're fine, you know. I wouldn't drive this car on, a, like, a six-hour trip without at least taking a break every hour and a half. But, you know, others have, and they've been fine. You know, seats... I've always been very sensitive to seats. You know, now driving this car for an hour, hour and a half, whatever, it's fine. I've, um... I've driven this car... I, three hours in one day once. And, you know, it was okay. I, I It didn't hurt my back or anything like that. But at the same time, it's, it's not the most comfortable. But this car is not designed to be comfortable so um yeah anyway okay i think that's it i've i've rattled on a lot and i'm sure i've rattled some cages but i just wanted to say my thoughts especially as an owner of one of these cars all right have a great day